What if your Google GCA question was focused on helping Google improve something, but it fell outside of the core focus area or scope of the role? For example, how would you design a program that would encourage more employee referrals? This question appears to be very HR focused, but you might get this question when you're interviewing as an engineer, as a product manager, or even a salesperson. And in this video, I want to show you how to answer this GCA question differently if you are interviewing for one of these three roles. We are going to focus heavily on the first three of the four components of CFAST. So we're really going to dive into clarification, frameworks, and assumptions. I don't do any of these roles, so we're not going to get heavily into the solutions, but I'm really going to show you how to set it up. Let's dive in. Item one, role specific. I have spoken extensively on this subject. If you really want to have great success with your GCA answers, answer these questions wearing the lens of the role. Why? It will make it easier for you and it will make it easier for your interviewer to connect with you because they're likely in a similar role. And solving in this way makes your answer much more specific. When you speak with more specificity, you're more memorable and it allows your interviewer to follow along and visualize and then you can just dive deeper into the details once you're more specific. Now, item two is past experience. This is a hypothetical answer and should be treated that way, but we still need to utilize past experience to guide us, to fuel our answer. So we're gonna clearly restate the question and then we're gonna ask, we're gonna say, hey, can I have a minute to gather my thoughts? And then you're simply gonna ask yourself, when was the last time I was part of an initiative to enhance anything? Because that will get you in this enhancing mindset. It will start to get you to think about larger initiatives, programs, and projects. And then you can start to use some of those concepts as fuel to answer the question, meaning we don't want to try to create everything from scratch. Let's use past experience to help lead and guide us. Item number three is practice. Now, items one and two, they are very straightforward, but it's just not that simple. You need to practice these items for better results. And to feel comfortable taking these steps, I encourage practicing these questions a lot and obviously practicing with a human being, but there's this misconception, right? That GCA answers, GCA are these like one type of questions and then hypothetical and open-ended questions are this other bucket. They're really all the same. So if you learn to take this approach for any hypothetical or open-ended question, you're gonna have way better overall success. So we're gonna dive in. We're gonna do sample answers as an engineer, product manager, and salesperson. And I'll kind of talk about some of those consistent themes that I'll be bringing up for all three. So we're just going to imagine an unresponsive interviewer and that we really need to own it and take the flow. I'll build in a little bit of pausing and transitions, not too much of that for the purpose of these examples. So let's dive in. Each time I just want to restate the question so we can mentally start to get into that space. How would you design a program that would encourage more employee referrals? So again, mindset of the engineer. Have we ever utilized technology when designing referral programs in the past? Um, I would also want to know if we're dealing with any constraints from a pers uh, technology perspective. Are we focusing in on encouraging engineer referrals or just referrals in general? I'd really want to understand the scope. Is this engineer focused, right? Is this Bay Area focused? Is this US or global focused? And then is there a specific timeline? from a metrics perspective, a rollout perspective. Do we want to do this in a couple sprints, a quarter, all next year? What's our timeline? Okay, a few concepts that would really help our solution would be, we definitely want to focus in on ease of use. That's going to be critical for the people we're trying to encourage. Uh, always we want to be thinking about scale. We want to make sure it's reliable, maintainable, and we absolutely want to focus in on some level of automation. I think we should start by focusing in on ease of use, but is there another area you want to focus in on? Okay, let's make a few assumptions. Um, let's say we want to test a more automated solution, but we're going to test just by working with Bay Area engineers only to start. 
Uh, let's assume that we want to complete all this testing and have a really good plan path forward by the end of Q1 of 2023. And let's really assume that what we're trying to do is we're trying to get more referrals by automating how current Googlers can figure out the updates to their current first connections on LinkedIn. And that last piece, we'd probably want to collaborate with the product team on how to add these features into our applicant tracking system. So if we're going to solve by focusing and starting with ease of use, we can solve by doing, and then I would leave that solution up to the engineers because I, I'm not an engineer, but now we have some clearly defined or a clearly defined path and we have lots of different areas we can go. So let's flip over. Let's show how this answer would be slightly different, this GCA answer, if we were answering as a product manager. For Flow, let's talk about the question, how would you design a program that encourages more employee referrals? Well, I'd really want to understand, have we identified the user pain points yet, or will that be a part of creating this program? Uh, are we adding features to an existing program, or is this a brand new program? Now, are we focused in on encouraging more product manager referrals or referrals in general? And then you can start to see it gets thematic. We would probably ask questions about, is the scope location in the US, US, or global based? And then we'd be asking questions about timeline. Why is this so critical? Because for any role, understanding scope and timeline, they're great generic clarifying questions. And I want that as part of your strategy, as part of the clarifying questions that you have on your cheat sheet. Okay, let's move into the framework. So a few items we might wanna consider in order to solve are, we definitely wanna be thinking about our users. We wanna consider the specific features. We wanna learn what we need to prioritize, consider trade-offs, and then the last two critical items are, we'd really wanna be thinking about engagement and overall adoption. I think we should start by focusing in on users, but is there another area you'd like to focus in on? Okay, let's make some assumptions. Let's say we actually do need to collect that user pain point data, so we'll start there. And then based on that feedback, we're going to be adding some additional features to a program that already exists. I have to imagine that Google has already established something like this, and that we're gonna start with Bay Area product managers only, and we wanna have all this data and information gathered and collected by the end of Q2 2023. And then let's really specify it down and say, we're gonna work on features that can be embedded into our ATS system to allow Googlers to identify updates to their current first connections in LinkedIn to build better referrals. And absolutely, we're gonna work with the engineering team on how to automate this into our ATS system. So if we were gonna solve by focusing and starting with users, we would do that by, okay. So you can see, I use some similar assumptions but my framework and assumptions were much more product focused. So now let's flip over. These would be the salesperson assumptions and I think that these work and are going to focus in on being slightly more generic. So let's try this approach. Again, one last time, let's trigger that practice question. How would you design a program that would encourage more employee referrals? Well, I'd wanna know when designing this program, are we focusing in on looking at just incentives or anything else? Are we customizing this program based on an entire audience, a specific audience, or taking a more generic approach? Are we focusing in on just looking for salesperson referrals or any referrals in general? And then again, we'd go to those items of scope and timeline because those are critical items. So we'd be trying to narrow the scope down to a location, US, geography, um, a sample size, and then the timeline. And we could be looking at that timeline, again, from a quarter basis, yearly basis, et cetera. Now, the framework. So if I was gonna introduce this framework, a few items we might utilize to help us solve are, we definitely wanna understand the overall goals of the program. We'd wanna look at that historical data and then we'd wanna transition and start to think about how we look at enablement, how we customize, and then strongly think about the incentives and the critical stakeholders that would be involved. I think we should start by focusing in on the data, but is there another area you wanna focus in on? Let's make some assumptions. Let's assume that we are designing a program for more referrals 
by providing better financial incentives. And let's assume that our entire, our target audience is the entire US. Uh, our goal would be to have it not only tested, but completely rolled out by the end of 2023. And let's assume that this is a program that we are going to heavily weight based on the number of people referred that accept jobs. So if they do it within a defined period of one year, the incentives would grow for the more referrers that accept and joined Google. So if we're gonna solve by focusing in on data, we can solve by doing, and then we would dive in and solve for it. So I know I left the solutions out. I, wanna, I wanted to kind of prompt and give you the opportunity to kind of think through those solutions if you're in any of those roles, because the setup is gonna be so critical to get to those great solutions. And now the assumptions were specific enough that we can really drill down and create great solutions. But this goes back to really wearing the hat of the role and understanding that Google will sometimes ask GCA questions that are about Google, but they do not feel super role specific. I really hope this video helps. Good luck.